A lot of countries have imposed new travel bans now, which restrict travel from Southern Africa to other countries, including the U.S., Singapore, Poland, and a number of others. One of the South African scientists who actually helped identify the Omicron variant took to Twitter to slam the travel ban, saying the world should provide support to South Africa and Africa and not discriminate or isolate it. South Africa's health minister also echoed that statement, saying that there's no basis for the restrictions right now. ABC News State Department reporter Connor Finnegan joins me now for more on this. So, Connor, what do you make of all this? And, and do you think South Africa is being unfairly criticized after being forthcoming, actually, with all this information? Hey, Keir, yeah, not just criticized, but penalized, really. Travel from South Africa being restricted will have implications for its economy, for its reputation. And, and it did the right thing here, as you said. Its researchers came forward. They very quickly identified this new variant, and they came forward with that information. They shared it with public health authorities at the World Health Organization in the U.S. And now they are facing these restrictions on travel from their borders. And not just them, there are eight countries in total that are facing President Biden's restrictions. And, and some of those countries have not even identified the Omicron variant in their territory yet. Just two of the eight, Botswana and South Africa, have. And so President Biden is facing some criticism here for, for uh, you know, being hypocritical, essentially. President Trump took a similar step early on during the COVID pandemic, banning travel from China. And, and at the time, candidate Biden said that President Trump was being perhaps xenophobic in his restrictions on travel from China. Well, Biden has now done the same thing. And there are lots of people who are questioning the efficacy of doing just that and, and perhaps creating a reverse incentive here, it, you know, teaching other countries around the world that if you come forward, if you share this information, then perhaps you too will face penalties for it. So what's the argument then for implementing these restrictions when experts say the variant is likely already here in the United States? Yeah, I mean, public health authorities say that this is something they recommended to the president. The State Department said that repeatedly yesterday when I pressed them during a briefing. And the argument here is that you buy time, that, that essentially by restricting the flow of people coming from these countries, you give health authorities the chance to understand a bit more about this virus, understand the strength of it, its ability to transmit, its ability to evade or, or uh, you know, otherwise evade uh, vaccines and, and their efficacy. And so you, if you give, uh, you know, health authorities that time, they can learn more about it. They can put restrictions and other measures in place in order to slow the spread of the virus. But again, as you said, th this virus is very likely in the U.S. already, although it hasn't been detected. And it's in other countries where travel has not been restricted so far. And, and so you know, the, 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 the problem here is that the folks who are continuing to travel into the U.S. are not facing any sort of additional restrictions. Even with the president's, uh, you know, restrictions from these eight African countries, U.S. citizens, lawful permanent residents, and certain foreigners are still allowed to travel to the U.S. Everyone who travels to the U.S. has to have a negative COVID test, but there is no additional quarantine upon arrival in the U.S. when, you know, you could additionally test positive at some point later down the line. So how could these restrictions affect the world economy, you think, and the global supply chain uh, that's been tangled up in all this mess, too? Yeah, it's such a mess. And, and, and the Federal Reserve, Reserve Chair just warned about that yesterday in, in testimony before Congress. Jerome Powell was saying that this new variant could have a deep impact uh, on the global economy, on those supply chains. If we see additional restrictions, additional lockdowns around the world with folks not able to go to work or unwilling to go to work, we could see additional issues with, with bringing goods onshore into the U.S. Or, or manufacturing here in the U.S. and around the world, really. Our State Department reporter and uh, producer, Connor Finnegan. Connor, thanks so much. Thanks, Kara. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.